How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. This is an excerpt from the Chase the Craft podcast with Jason from Brew Union and Manawa Brew. Jason is a professional brewer and also a little bit of a mad scientist when it comes to beer. Lockdown has all sorts of people catching their own wild yeast or wanting to catch their own yeast, and this little conversation we had is very, very topical. I wanted to give you an example of how using yeast from a crazy place, somewhere like silage of all things, can go wonderfully, wonderfully right. But I also wanted you to listen to the conversation about how it can go horribly wrong or just not work, and you just don't know what's going to happen. So how did you go about fermenting a beer with <laughs> with silage? <laughs> uh, well, oh, it's a tough one. So basically all <laughs> I did was I, um, I, I made up a, a starter, a starter wort. Um, so I'm, I'm sure brewers definitely understand that. I'm sure um, distillers will, by the end of this pod, um, podcast, understand it. So wort is basically unfermented beer. So I made up this little starter that was at a... Uh, 1040 starting gravity, and I grabbed a handful of silage, literally a handful, and smashed it into this wort and just let it inoculate the sugar that was in the wort. Just watched it grow, basically. Once I was happy with where it was at, <clears throat> I made a beer with um, fairly certain it was Vienna malt and East Kent Golding's hops, and just took the silage out of the wort that I'd made previously, my starter, and um, just tipped it in and let it go. So I let it ferment as I normally would a beer. Um, Taste sorry if you can hear the dog having a big hoon in the background there. Um, it's okay. Yeah, so I let the beer ferment out. It dropped below zero, so below the um, level of water. So it was fairly dry. I wouldn't say like licking sand dry, but it was pretty bloody close. And then it was Fijoa season here in New Zealand. So Fijoa is a um, pineapple guava, I believe, uh, is, is what it's also known as, but it's native to South Africa and we're lucky enough in New Zealand, or unlucky enough if you don't like it, have quite a few trees of those in New Zealand here. So my sister-in-law um, had a tree and um, I managed to grab eight kgs of this um, delicious fruit Hand shucked it with my lovely wife, who you can probably hear yelling at the dog in the background. Froze it so the cell walls would break down so you'd get more um, flavours out of it. And then put that into the beer and left it for about six months. In that six months, the um, the fruit was actually like half, half whole. And when I went to rack the beer out of that fermenter, it was completely gone. There was no solids in there at all. So the yeast had eaten. Wow. It had this glorious looking pellicle on the top. Pellicle is basically a protective layer that the yeast, or, or in this case, the bugs are throwing out. Bugs, I mean, micro bugs, not insects. Yeah. Um, so it's, <laughs> Anything it's other than Saccharomyces, brewers tend to call bugs. So similar to this here, uh, white film on my beer. Um, it, it just basically protects the... Um, the wort or the beer from, from oxygen. So right. can, um, the yeast can keep growing and the, and the bugs can keep eating all the sugars and creating all these off flavors. So the, it looks like the crater of the moon. So if you if you Google pellicle porn, you will see some <laughs> really... <laughs> I love how really... you waited. You paused for me to take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> so if you Google pellicle porn, you'll, you'll see some really, really interesting images. So it actually looks like the yeah. crater of the moon. It's white. You'll have little areas that are borderline cream. They're not. They're not off. They're not. It's not bad. It's not going to kill you. It's just a protective film. So sauerkraut can get it. I was talking about my sauerkraut earlier. It's got a pellicle. Kim Kim Chi can get it if you let it go far enough. Any fermented food will eventually grow a pellicle if it's wild. Even in my commercial career, I've been been brewing for nine years, and it has to be the best beer that I have ever made. The beautiful thing about it is you'll never be able to make it again. No, I won't. No, absolutely not. So reasons for that are um, quite a few. So the biggest one is the um, person that we use to make our silage now uses a different inoculant. So I'm not going to get that same flavour profile that I did out of that original batch. And malt changes, um, hops change, and the the most important thing for me is that my sister-in-law doesn't have a bloody Fiji tree anymore. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a beautiful story to illustrate the fact that 
anything you do with wild yeast is a crapshoot that can go wonderfully well yep. or horribly wrong. Absolutely. And you just never know what's going to happen until it happens. No, you don't. So we touched on this before, but how do you know? I, I didn't know. Um, I smelt it um, when it was growing in, in the starter, and it, it smelt absolutely feral. I tasted it, and it tasted just like 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 borderline rotten oranges, like like just really juicy oranges. Like fruit will get to a certain right. point just before it starts rotting, where it just releases all of its sugar, and that's what it tasted like. And I was like, oh man, this is going to be awesome. So I just I just went for it. Like I had nothing to lose. It was a, a twenty three liter batch of beer. At the end of the day, all I was going to do was tip out twenty three liters of beer and probably throw away the plastic fermenter it was in to, you know, <laughs> yeah. not, not worry about cross contamination. But it, it it worked out. Like you, you're right, you just don't know. I've put up a, a video recently about yeast because people can't get yeast, and we're going to get onto that, guys. Don't worry. I know we're forty five minutes in, and we're not there <laughs> yet, but we're getting there. And I get comments like. I made, you know, I made yeast, which is hilarious in and of itself, by doing X, Y, and Z. You should do it too because it's delicious. And the idea that yeast that was harvested from a potato or from a banana or from a fruit tree or from someone's beard on the other side of the planet being the same as what I'm going to get here by pulling it from the same place is just ridiculous to the point where if you took two different handfuls of silage out of the same silage bale mm -hmm. and put it into two identical starters mm -hmm. yeah i i would have to imagine that they're going to end up giving you two different things yeah totally would um biggest reason for that is in, in that respect is the the silage isn't always inoculated the same all the way through right so you're going to have more of one specific type of of bacteria in one handful than you might in the other handful. So the same goes for when you're, you're making your yeast at home. If you're using a potato here in New Zealand and then you're using a dirty old spud up in England and then you're using a dirty <laughs> old um, a, a dirty old potato over in America, they're all going to give you different flavours because yeah. the yeast you're actually capturing is from your, um, your area. It's not in the potato. It's not in the fruit. It's on yeah. the potato. It's on the fruit. It's... Yeah, so if you, it's the same as a sourdough, right? If I make a sourdough here at my place and you make a sourdough at your place, we're, you know, 20 k's away from each other, but it's going to be completely different because I've got different, I've got different yeast in my house and you've got different yeast in your house. From a scientific point of view, you might find the same strain of Saccharomyces in there, but it's everything else that's within that Saccharomyces, like Pediococcus lactobacillus, um, potentially Britannomyces, if you're lucky enough, that give you your, specific flavor profile so if we turn that into wine making and we look at grapes it's exactly the same thing for grapes so Sauvignon Blanc grown here in New Zealand and Sauvignon Blanc grown in um, France they might be the exact same grape like the exact same plant it might just be a mother and a daughter style but the flavors that you're going to get out of your finished product even if you use the same yeast they're going to be different because your hops oh, sorry your grapes are grown in different areas, so the toa in France is different from New Zealand. Mm. So you're always yeah. going to get a different, a different, a different flavour, and that's just how nature is. I'm really glad we had this discussion before we got stuck into how to do it because I do want people to know that if you're fucking with with wild yeast, you just don't know what you're going to get, right? And it might be amazing, it might be horrible. There are things you can do to potentially kind of grow something once you find it is delicious but it is the beauty and it is the downfall of this process that it might turn out horrible and that's great you start again and next time it's good mm. but it might turn out absolutely amazing and it's never going to happen again <laughs> yeah. as opposed to pitching a commercial yeast which is consistent you know that yeah. as long as you treat it the same way if you give it the same food to feed on in the same environment and you make everything you remove all the factors as much as you can it's going to behave pretty damn similarly right absolutely you can catch the rest of this conversation with jason at chasethecraft.com under the podcast section or search for it under any of the major podcatchers there's a bunch of other interesting conversations with amazing industry folk 
great information for the budding commercial distiller. Keep on chasing the craft, guys. See ya.